Good morning everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda, I do hope that you're well. Today is November the 5th, 2024. I'm recording this at 9.30 a.m. UK time. And it is bonfire night here in the UK and it is election day in USA. So I was always going to come on and say something with regards to today. And I'm being prompted to say something before the results are known. And indeed, before many, much of the voting is done, although I know there are record levels of uh, votes that have already been in before today. So it'll be interesting to look back at this video in the next 48 hours or so. Although it's less about predictions because I have already done prediction videos on what I think may happen. And before I forget to say it, I will just reaffirm that I feel that whoever wins tonight, there may very well be changes between now and Inauguration Day. And that can play out in a multitude of different ways. But um, yeah, we'll just watch this space. So whatever happens tonight, I still feel as though there may be changes in the run up to January. And I will come back and do a fuller video when we know the result. But this is today's message. These are observations, hopefully supportive messages to steady the nerves steady the ship, which is USA. And in no particular order, let's get going. I've pulled two cards off camera. Uh, and I think I'd just like to start with them. Because I'm very aware that I don't know what the split is, but certainly I've got Republicans that follow me, and absolutely are wanting a Trump victory. I've also got Democrats that follow me and are wanting a Harris victory. I've probably also got a good proportion of uh, people who follow me who aren't particularly enthusiastic about either candidate, but have either sort of <laughs> hoped for the best and voted for somebody, or indeed might not have voted at all. So here are the cards. It's an important rem reminder, not just for today, but generally with regards to the changes that we want to see politically and socially in our world, that we have to visualize it first. Nikola Tesla, one of his teachings was, for something to become reality, it first has to start in the mind. And it's a really important reminder that the people that are there on the world stage, whether it's USA, UK, India, Canada, Australia, wherever, are, whether we like it or not, an expression of an aspect of us and the wider collective in that country. Is it true that we get the government we deserve? Maybe, yes. Um, so that's a hard pill to swallow, I know, but I believe it is true. So for real effective change to happen, and if you are not happy with either candidate right now, whether it's USA or in any other place around the world, we had a UK election quite recently, and the, le the government in power now only actually got 20% um, mandate from the general population which is quite something. So really apathy won the day. There wasn't a big appetite for Labour. It was just that we people wanted the Tories out. But even that being said, still, in regards to the actual population, they only got 20% of the vote. Anyway, today's not about UK, it's about USA. But it's just a good reminder that we have to really reflect and think about who do we want to be leading us? What are the types of qualities that we wish to see? And it starts with us at grassroots level. What's been quite apparent watching from afar, the USA, I want to say circus to be perfectly honest, is that 
whichever candidate, this applies to all candidates really, but it's as though we place all of our hopes on a particular person maybe, and we are blind to their flaws. And I think there are flaws in all of the candidates, quite frankly. But ultimately, if we go back to what do we visualize for our leader, we wouldn't be visualizing somebody with huge flaws. We wouldn't be envisaging somebody perfect either, but we would be envisaging better probably than the choice that we have right now. The second card that came up was the Vesica Pisces, which works so beautifully with this card, Visualize. Because the Vesica Pisces sacred geometry shows two circles overlapping, creating the third portal. And I do think, with regards to USA, this may very well be the start of the uh, end of two-party politics, particularly as the polls look very much as though the country is hugely split and divided. And quite frankly, whoever wins tonight, I almost want to say there is no real winner because whoever wins, pretty much nearly half of the country don't want that person in power. And that's a really sad state of affairs, but it's also to do with the limited choice that you have. So number one, needing to manifest better for the future. And I absolutely have got my eye on 2028 as being a time when there is a fresher choice, let's put it that way, as though we might be into a different paradigm by then, or certainly the start of it. But right now, we are choosing from what I'm wanting to, I'm hearing Spirit say is the scrap box. Um, sorry, no offence, but it, it, it's a bit, do you know fish and chips, the analogy of fish and chips? We love our fish and chips here in the UK. And you go and you get fish and chips. I had them yesterday, actually. I went out for lunch. It was great. But in the north... Uh, I don't know whether it's so much in the in the south of England, but you can have what's called scraps. So you don't buy the fish, you don't buy the chips, you get a bag of scraps, which is all the bits of burnt batter basically at the bottom. Tastes very nice, Does, is not very nourishing, is not very filling, is not very sustaining. And it's as though worldwide right now, we are being offered the scraps, okay? So we can choose the best of the scraps, but it's still the scraps. Going forward, we need to visualize better. Okay, so those are the first two cards. Um, what else have I written down here that I wanted to talk to you about? I mean, I have mentioned before, but today's date for your election in USA is, as I say, bonfire night here in UK. And just very quickly, to remind you what that's all about, is in, I'm just reading here, in, get, get the year right, 1605, 5th of November, 1605, is when Guy Fawkes and his co-conspirators attempted, but failed in their gunpowder plot, to blow up the House of Lords. Every year on the 5th of November is Guy Fawkes Night, or Bonfight Night, to commemorate this. Um, so we're sort of celebrating the fact that uh, he didn't succeed. And there is a very famous poem, and it goes like this. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Guy Fawkes, Guy Fawkes, t'was his intent to blow up the king and the parliament. Three score barrels of powder below, poor old England to overthrow. By God's providence, he was catched with a dark lantern and burning match. Holla boys, holla boys, let the bells ring. Holla boys, holla boys, God save the king. So, just interesting that we have that symbolism today as you go to vote. I guess really what it's about more than anything is 
celebrating the safeguarding of some form of governance. Let's, let's not get into whether you like kings and queens and presidents and who is president. It's more to do with the rule of law. Um, so there's that. And I think that's, let's just pull a card on that, shall we? Because the yeah, I just the it's so interesting. I'm going to go to this deck. This deck has really been calling me today. This is the Japanese Tarot by Nino Japanese. By the way, I forgot to say, but comments are probably off on this video um, for reasons that I explained in my last video on personal update. I've got a lot going on in my personal life at the moment and I'm needing to uh, protect my bandwidth, as I called it. You can look back if you want to know what's going on with me. But anyway, I wanted to be there for those of you that I know appreciate these messages and hopefully I can be a grown-up voice in the room and bring some calmness into the situation. Okay, so we've got these two cards that have flipped. You can see that. And um, they are rather ominous, has to be said. So we were just asking about the symbolism of the US election being on bonfire night. We've got the Tower, the Eight of Fire and the Stranger of Gardens. So I think we all know what the Tower looks like very well. In this deck, it looks like that. It's depicted like that. And um, the Tower is the Tower. Um, pretty gothic looking tower here with a volcano about to blow who or what is the volcano now you see straight away people can say if trump loses he's going to be the volcano that blows but what we have to understand is that and i'm not making a prediction here with regards to his loss i'm just going to talk about all eventualities in this video but if he were to lose and the volcano blows its top he's only an indication of the simmering uh, anger and frustration and disappointment that others would be feeling as well we can't get away from the micro and macro reflection on anything but america is basically simmering i do wonder actually with this volcano brewing as though is there an actual physical volcano that could erupt? Do I mean by that within the next hour? Not necessarily, no. But um, wouldn't be surprised if Mother Nature has her say. We'll, we'll see what transpires there. We've got the Stranger of Gardens. Um, I'll show you the card in a moment, but I just want to pick out the images on it myself as well. We have the conch shell, we have a bird, we have a masked winged figure. There's a mask up here. Um, the stranger of gardens. Hmm. Let's see what it actually says about the stranger of gardens because it's one of those cards that I challenges me a little bit but that's good it's good to be challenged isn't it uh, the stranger of gardens hold on uh, where is it here we go here we go guys <sighs> sorry five of gardens seven of gardens jester of gardens stranger of gardens stranger of gardens as a member of the earth suit and with its solid midsection and fierce leonine head, Leo nine head, might at first appear to likely be the most, the most earthbound of the four strangers. Yet its fragile but still functioning wings and the bird residing in its lower extremities are symbolic testimony to the extraordinary fortitude and perseverance that this remarkable image exemplifies. This card may signify a stubborn or indefatigable person who could be a tenacious adversary if opposed. Um, it's to do with a methodical or deliberate approach, completion of a task, and ambition coupled with endurance. Who you think has those qualities will be for you to decide. Some people will think that is Trump. Other people will think it is Kamala. But I tell you what, um, this date for the election is explosive. You don't need me to tell you that. And um, I'm hearing old paradigms will fall. Okay, 
We'll come back to the cards in a moment, but let me just also say what else I've got written down here. These are just thoughts, really. I, you know, the celebrity culture in our world, I think, is out of control. I think the fall of celebrity culture is long overdue. And if the Epstein list hadn't already taught you that, the Diddy list certainly will. It is very obvious to me that there are a lot of people who are standing up endorsing, who are on the lists. I think a lot of you know that. Some of you don't know. And I think some of you are going to be in for a shock. And I say that with no excitement or anticipatory glee. I think it's just bloody sad, to be honest to have been led up the garden path by so many that we uh, maybe hooked our dreams onto, our hopes onto, um, that we admired, that we liked their songs, that we liked their acting, that we liked what we thought they stood for. But there is just such an ugly shadow side to it all. So to me, it's crystal clear. These people coming out endorsing are doing so either because they are being forced to. Um, it's like just, just being forced to, being paid to. Um, but more than that, more than that, for me as a just normal human being, I cannot believe, well, I've written down here, celebrity endorsement is the epitome of meaninglessness. <laughs> is that meaninglessness. The epitome of meaninglessness. If you need a celebrity to sway you with regards to whether it's right or left, I just think that's sad that we that we can't think for ourselves. And absolutely, I have heroes. I have people that I look up to. And if they came out and endorsed the side that I didn't want to win in an election, for example, um, would it sway me? 100% not. 100% not. If anything, I would just be, oh, that's disappointing. But anyway, I'm going to park that and I'm still going to listen to their music because I still quite like them. But, you know, the, um, yeah, just the celebrity. Exp and, and more than anything, what's come to me is that some of these celebrities are loving the exposure. Some of them, not all of them, are fading stars. And it's like a moment in the spotlight again. Um... Or a moment of redemption, I'm hearing, for some as well. Whatever that means. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I think that is really vacuous and shallow and empty. And I don't care who I offend by saying that. Um, celebrity endorsement for me is just a total no-no. I think the other thing that the election shows is how... I've said this before, but how long it is. And how... Just trying to find the right word. I think in some ways it's dangerous because what it does is it takes the focus off other things that are going on in the world that demand and need attention now. So we know that there are decisions that are paused until after the election. There are things that aren't said in case it sways the election or it offends somebody or disappoints somebody. So candidates will play it safe. They won't necessarily always lay out their stall in terms of what they are going to do. And that's true for both sides. But more than anything, it's this vacuum that seems to be created it's as though it's like the inward breath and although government carries on working yes to a degree of course it does the really big moves and important decisions are put off and so to have such a long protracted campaign over what has felt like a decade but actually it's probably just a year I think needs looking at so if I was heading up the regeneration of the way it's done, one of the things I would be looking at is the length of campaign. I mean, many things as well. The funding of campaigns, all of it really needs to fall. The tower needs to fall on the whole structure. I've said this many times. The whole bird is diseased. 
you can pick a wing, but again, you're picking at a wing that has lost a lot of its feathers. Yeah. Um, also, the, the length of the campaign and the way that it's done, this sort of rock star energy. I mean, to me as a Brit, it's a complete anathema because we don't do politics in that way. And I'm not saying we've got it right here because we haven't either. Um, so I'm not saying that, but it is just weird to me watching it. It's like a spectacle. It feels like a circus whipping up the crowd. Um, it's entertainment. It feels as though it's entertainment. And I think we have to ask ourselves, should politics and governments be entertainment? I'm reminded of, and I can't remember in what order the prime ministers came in this country, because God knows we've had enough of them. But um, it was probably after maybe Blair. You know, you get the politicians who have a lot of spice is what I'm hearing, you know, just in terms of drama. Because we're all addicted to the drama in many ways. We're addicted to the drama. We're addicted to the adrenaline rush of what has he done now? What has he said now? What a buffoon. What has she said now? What has she done now? What an idiot, you know? Um, and absolutely, there are channels feeding this, feeding this for years. But equally, the rallies are feeding this as well. Reminds me a bit of a football match, tribalism in its rawest form. But tribalism without being able to sit with another tribe is pretty dangerous, I think. And it doesn't get us any closer to unity. But I just see this addiction to drama and the adrenaline rush and the dopamine hit that we get. And I think that needs to change. And often what will happen is people will tire of that eventually. And then you get somebody like a John Major type figure come in. That's <laughs> what we had in the UK. Somebody pretty grey and a bit dull and a bit flatlining. But it's like, you know, enough of all of this circus. We just need somebody calm to come in. I don't think either candidate tonight, whoever wins, is going to bring in the calmness. Uh, unfortunately, I, I hope they do, but I, I can't see it. Not with these cards, the tower and the volcano and the stranger of gardens. Um, plus the fact it's a bit like my husband always says this about he doesn't watch football, but the I don't know if this is true of all football seasons around the world, but in England, the football season seems to go on forever. You know, it's only just finished and then it starts up again is what it feels like. And it's as though the players are tired before they've even got, they're tired by the end of the season, but then they're tired when they start the new season. And it feels as though, the, I mean, both candidates right now, Kamala and Trump, look tired and I don't blame them. Factor into that, the fact that Trump is the age he is, Kamala is, I think she's, she's 60, something like that. Again, you know, I'm near to that age. It's, there's nothing wrong with being that age. But again, you're not 20, you're not 30. I just feel as though it goes on for too long. It's, um, it becomes stale, stale. So I think that's another thing that needs to change. Um... I've written down here, and I've said this before, that it matters how we behave. And I would really put a call out today to all of you in America, because half of you are going to be happy with the result and half of you are not. And I would like you to think that if you're on, for example, the winning side, how would you like to be treated? How would you like the response to be to that win? There's something to do about there's something here about sportsmanship and being a good sport and being able to concede. There have been results politically in my lifetime, in my country that I've completely not agreed with. Um, Brexit would be one. But ultimately, in a democracy, you have to get behind what has been voted in. And you can have a moment of disappointment, anger, whatever comes up for you, frustration. But you have to deal with that yourself, not take it out on anybody else. And certainly not take it out on other people online or on the streets or your neighbours, your friends, other family members that have voted differently from you. 
We have to trust that everybody is where they are. They voted for whatever reason they voted, mostly in good conscience, with regards to where they are now and what they know. And in a democracy, we have to accept the result. So there's something about good sportsmanship. And again, that starts at grassroots level. Um, I've seen a few videos online, I'm sure you have over the last few days, of people getting pretty near hysterical um, because maybe a family member has voted differently from them. I saw one poor girl, my heart went out to her. It looked like a mental health issue, to be perfectly honest. In floods of tears, completely distraught, trembling because her father had voted differently from her. And she said something along the lines of, that's it, I've lost my dad now. And, um, you know, it's just... Let's get it in proportion, shall we, that we're never going to agree on politics in any family, in any business, in any friendship group, in any state, in any street. You're going to have people that vote differently from you, think differently from you, see life through a different lens from you. And what it doesn't mean is that they are bad and you are good. And I know I'm speaking to the converted here because you get that, the people that are watching me. I know you get this, but I just feel as though I need to put this message out energetically to our world today to try to just bring some balance back. Um, I, I did say to you, didn't I, that when, uh, you know, our election recently and I absolutely had a moment of complete despair and uh, anger, if I'm honest, anger, despair, frustration, sadness that, you know, I just I just knew it wasn't going to be good. You know, this government. And the point was, in that moment, um, I saw neighbours put up like victory, <laughs> you know, posters in their windows and things. And not that I ever would have done this in a million years because I'm not this type of person. But say if I'd gone and knocked on their door and had it out with them or had a slanging match in the street with them because you don't know what you've done. The only person that, that would have come back on would have been me. I would have had to own that response. I would have had to own that anger and I would have had to pay for that. Uh, so remember that it matters how you behave. I think in many ways it'd be good to have a little bit of a break uh, in the next 24, 48 hours from social media. I suspect the vast majority of people will not do that. But I really uh, suggest that rather than writing something inflammatory or nasty to somebody that maybe has got the different opinion to you, that you really sit with that response yourself and don't dish it out. Because the truth is we never know what anybody else is going through. We don't know the reasons why they voted as they have. And from a unity perspective, we have to get to a place where we respect that I don't agree with you. I don't share that view of the world. I don't want that. But, you know, I can't force you or control you or tell you what to do, because that is dictatorship. So, um, I think those were the main things that I wanted to say today. I will just pull some cards for us. And I feel the dragon energy very strongly, actually, today. Um, calling on dragons to bring in uh, their energy, which helps to transmute the fire and any potential unrest. Uh, I see dragons circling in the skies in USA, just trying to help put out the flames, transmute, just transmute, 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 transmute. Now I've got a dragon deck here, so let's pull a card from the dragon oracle. And then I think I will also pull some cards for USA post the result. And we'll just see what we get for that, okay? Right. So this deck, oh, I'll put the decks that I'm using below, okay? So you'll be able to see that. Let's have a look. So USA, November the 5th. Guidance from the Dragon Realms, please. We have Determination. We've also got the card of Stillness again. And what's that one poking out? That one is flow. F 
flow and stillness, of course, are slightly contradictory cards, aren't they? Um, because you can't flow and be still. I mean, flow implies a degree of movement. Um, determination. Can you be? Can you be determined to be the quiet eye of the storm? to be still whilst around you everybody else might be behaving however they're going to behave you can't affect that you can't change that you just have to be that quiet eye of the storm and you have to flow with the dragons are saying you have to flow with all eventualities with however it pans out this dragon looks as though it's caught in the seaweed or it's caught in reeds, but it's still somehow managing to rise and flow from that place where others might feel trapped. But there's definitely this energy of stillness. I'm really feeling this. Um, pause, basically. Pause and reflect rather than react and shout. It's that type of energy. Um, to be able to sit and look at this dragon. She's got all of these purple crystals on her back, implying something like amethyst. Purple ray of transmutation. To be still, to be that stillness. To find that place within yourself. Whatever the result, whatever transpires, which is calm, which is still which is love and it will always be there the determination card to me can you see there are like these black clouds storm clouds around it but to me this dragon represents new earth it represents <laughs> ascension it represents new consciousness fifth dimensional consciousness and I want to say that no matter what the result is, that this dragon is determined to rise and will. And that what's happening today is just one moment in time. It doesn't make up the whole story of USA or the world. It's one moment in time. And I keep coming back to the corridor between now and January, that things might change Things might, things might change. Let's pull one card for the corridor between now and inauguration. Okay, before I even try to um, do anything, the Jester of Gardens has, pull, has flown out. So we've got the Jester and the Stranger of Gardens, both pentacles, both earth signs, um, but quite youthful, quite youthful signs. We haven't got kings or queens here, you know, in the deck. We've also got the Six of Tides, which is the past. Um, so past energy, reflecting back. I mean, one thing I haven't said here is, again, and this is, this is where we're at in the UK, but the UK and the USA often mirror each other. There's a big sense here in this country of buyer regret with regards to government at the moment. That's not to say necessarily that it's like, oh, if I'd only chose, chosen that, it would be so much better. But it's more, try not to put all of your hopes and dreams onto the golden calf, whether that's Trump or whether it's Harris, because neither are um, the Holy Grail. I'm getting the energy of the golden calf. It's like we're placing too much expectation and hope on one person, on one party. The future is all parties working together. And that might sound so far away right now, but it is the future. It's this energy of the Vesica Pisces that we started with. Okay. So it's just so sad to see people getting so upset and so tense and so stressed because they're placing all their hopes on one person. And as I say, right now here, what we've got is a massive case of buyer's regret um, or not. Some people thought it wasn't going to be that great and sadly they've been proven right. 
maybe it will change. We have to remain optimistic and hopeful and go to the highest timeline of all, at all times, of course. Um, let's now pull a couple of cards for the USA post this election. So we've had the, the tower and the volcano for November the 5th. Um, Yeah, the other thing as well, the volcano could also be linked into changes that need to happen with regards to how people vote. Uh, I was quite shocked that the is voter ID is not compulsory and law in all states. I hadn't realised that because here, absolutely it is. And I can't remember how many other countries, pretty much most other countries <laughs> that you can think of have got, require you to take voter ID with you to cast your vote. Um, absolutely, whether it's a driving license, a passport. Um, I think in the old days, you used to be able to take a, a, a bill, you know, with your name and address on. But the last one we had, um, yes, you had to take a passport or you had to take a driving license from memory. I didn't have a problem with that. Why would I have a problem with that? I don't see why anybody would have a problem with proving that they are who they are before you have to vote. So that will come in. I'm absolutely sure that that will come in at some point. Um, that is a change that definitely needs to be made. And if there are any irregularities with regards to voting and it be proven that somebody has voted more than once or somebody that's dead has voted or you know, etc. Um, the, the volcano will blow there as well. And to be honest, rightfully so, because we just expect that in modern democracies that campaigns are fair and that elections are run fairly, particularly if you are a country that then goes to uh, look how other countries do it, you know? Uh, what's the expression? I can't remember what the expression is, but, you know, I know there are people that go to other states to oversee <clears throat> how the ballots are counted, etc. So, you know, the USA, for example, should be absolutely one of the countries that should be one of the beacons for democracy and for how well it can be done. Admittedly, it's a huge blinking place with a lot of states, but um, that's the goal. Okay, let's pull a couple of cards then. Hold on. Uh, ooh, I don't really want to see those cards, but I have to get, I have to show you what I get given. I hadn't really, this deck is really talking. I hadn't even really shuffled them. Um, what I was trying to say was show me post the election. Are you not tired of all this? I certainly am. We have the card of war. We have the nine of fire. We're back in the we're back in the Colosseum in Rome, fighting each other for entertainment. Now I know why I had to use this deck. Look at this deck. The nine of fire, the nine of wands, two gladiators fighting to the death. But the thing about it is every they're, they're there because it's it's, a, it's entertainment people are cheering them on people are wanting to see the blood and the gore and you know it, it's what i call the gallows energy we still have that within us we have to purge this gallows energy do you know there's a reader on youtube won't name her but um one of the popular democrat readers because i'm not going to say she's a tarot reader because she's not she's a democrat reader and she has spent the last four years i don't follow her but she keeps coming up on my feed um just saying revolting things about donald trump for example calling him all the names under the sun making fun of him the whole tribe loved to laugh at him and she's holding a thing today which is let's just hold the energy of peace for the election it doesn't work like that you can't spend four years building up a steam of hate and vitriol and then just at the 11th hour say oh well you know let's all let's all just hold peace we have to get to a bigger uh, more mature spiritual maturity than that and absolutely there will be people on the other side of the coin that have done that to Kamala Harris as well Neither side is better. There will be readers that have done that to Kamala as well. 
okay but you know this is where we're at you know the nine of fire is this also an indication that it doesn't get decided properly tonight and that we go through recount after recount i mean it might be but we've also got the card of war now the card of war in this deck is actually the card of the emperor um so this is implying that whoever the leader is there's it, it, uh, we have the energy of war and we've got the gladiator in the ring We've also got the Nine of Gardens, though, um, which shows a lady in a garden. Nine of Pentacles. What does it say about the Nine of Pentacles in this deck? Let's have a look. I'll show you the card in a minute. And then I must get on with my day because I've got a lot of things to do today. But I did just want to come on and try and, you know, bring some calmness. I mean, it's difficult because we're talking about such a heavy subject. So the Nine of Gardens is an elegant and beautifully dressed woman um, in a garden. It's the completion of a cycle. Um, through hard work and discipline, she has attained her goals and she can now enjoy the beauty and the abundance. Gracious living with appreciation for the arts and the finer things. Um, now, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, that, that means that's Kamala and she's the one that's taking us to war. Uh, no, I, here, do you know what this card says to me? This is us. This is us in our garden. That whatever, whoever wins and however crazy it gets and wherever it leads, we have to be like the lady in the garden who is being able to appreciate the details and the beauty of life, who can walk like I did the other day. And, you know, my feet were going through all of the autumn leaves and I was loving the sound of it and the colours of autumn. And I'm appreciating the sound of birds outside my window right now. And I'm appreciating I'm about to go and buy my family some nice food and I'm going to make a nice meal. I'm appreciating my friend that's just died and, you know, writing words maybe to say, you know, for her, that type of things. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. You know, you know, if you've watched my last video on my personal update, I'm going through a bit of grief at the moment and my dad's ill and all of this type of stuff. And it brings home to you what is important. Sorry, it just brings home to you what's important and what is not. And if the Warhawks want to be the Warhawks, <sighs> we're going to have to rally the troops in a different way. And I'm talking about the loving troops. I feel John, John Lennon's energy here. Um, we will be helped in spirit, but we'll, there will also be other people that rise. This, this, this dragon here feels just determined to be able to lead us no matter what through the, through the storm clouds that are coming. Because I repeat, whoever wins tonight, we have trouble ahead. And it's a bit of a poison chalice, whoever wins, because they're winning a country that is completely divided, that's folded in on itself and has to come back to each other. That's the truth of it. So um, the champagne corks might be being popped for one party, but I'm almost tempted to say, remember to give some of your champagne to the losing side as well, because actually they're going to need it more than you. <laughs> That's really what I'm feeling. OK, final card for today. And obviously wishing you well and uh, all of that. OK, last card is the Seven of Winds, which is the Seven of Swords, which is a card of deception, uh, manipulation, lies. Now, you could interpret that in one way or another. But I also want to say here it's the lies we say to ourself. It's how we deceive ourself that there is one saviour out there that's going to put it all right in four, four years. No, they're not going to. Um, they, uh, we, we have to be the change. OK, so let's stop deceiving ourselves. Let's also stop listening to the Pied Pipers. And by that, I'm talking about the celebrities, you know, who half the time don't even know what they're endorsing. Was it Cardi B who was reading off a phone? You know what she had to say. I've never seen anything so ridiculous in my life, honestly. But I I will not judge her because, me, well, I won't judge her. Maybe she didn't know any better, but really, we deserve better as a world. We deserve better leaders, but we have to be the change. I can't leave on the Seven of Winds as the final card, can I? So let's go to another deck. Let's go to the deck that gave, gave us the reminder to visualise and also the Vesica Pisces. Let's go to this deck, which is the um, Secret Language of Light. 
final message for USA today. Yeah, that was actually on the bottom of the deck with these other two that I started with. So that's quite interesting. We've got insight. So visualize Vesica Pisces and insight. Card number 13. That looks very um, transforming, transmuting energy. It also feels as though whatever's happening, however crazy it gets, put yourself into this structure. And what I mean by that is this feels almost like a Merkaba, or if you don't visualize Merkaba or know anything about Merkaba, just imagine yourself surrounded by violet light, white light. Um, this person here is in a still place. It's very much like this dragon. They're in a still place. They're in a safe space. They have found a sweet spot in the middle of all the craziness. And it's from that place of love, compassion, non-judgment, unity, that eventually we get there. Okay. Um, just struck by the fact that that dragon is orange, actually, now I'm saying that. But um, I don't know. I'm not going to make a prediction with regards to this video. I've said other things on other ones. I'm just going to wish you peace and hope all goes well. Um, also, if you're in the UK, have a good bonfire night. I remember bonfire nights of old. It used to be one of my favourite times of the year. It used to be freezing cold. It's a lot warmer this year. And we used to wrap up. We used to go and have jacket potatoes, parking. I might make some parking today. Do you know what parking is? It's like gingerbread with oatmeal. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go make some parking. And we would, um, my dad would light fireworks in the back garden and we'd have a bonfire and we'd make a guy. So, you know, I'm just talking to people who don't, who aren't in the UK, but you know, you make a guy. So it's like a stuffed effigy, but it was all done very innocently. There was no nastiness involved with it. And um, yeah, my dad would make a big bonfire at the bottom of the garden. We'd have some sparklers. We'd write our name with the sparkler in the air. I love the smell of the sulfur that comes. And um, we'd have a chili con carne, something like that. Bit of parking, jacket potato. Those were the days, my friend. Those were the days. But anyway, take care. Lots of love. And um, I'll be back soon. Uh, I'll tell you what, I am going to be doing a spiritual news video soon and my heart goes out to the people of Spain in particular. Um, Valencia, terrible, terrible flooding. My granddad moved to, um, he emigrated actually, to Javier. I believe quite near to where it's all happening. Um, terrible scenes of devastation in Valencia, Barcelona. Um, yeah, I will be reading on that. I also want to read on the terrible situation in Afghanistan with um, the rights of women. I mean, my God. Uh, it's just indescribable what's going on out there and other things. But I also want to bring some lighthearted relief into this channel. I have a Heart Squad member who wants to come back and have a chat soon and um, might not be the one you're expecting, but it's like, to me, he feels a very brotherly energy and um, he's always there for me. He always seems to be there for me when maybe I feel a bit down or I'm going through difficult times in my life. I mean, one of them is Michael Jackson. Yeah, but no, this I'm talking about George Michael. <laughs> I'm really feeling George's uh, <clears throat> energy. I bet he'd have something to say on USA, wouldn't he? Yeah. Anyway, lots of love, guys. I must go now. Got things to do. Bye for now. Bye.